Good morning, everyone. And welcome to St Matthew's and to our service of remembrance for the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The choir, the sanctuary team and the clergy will be piped in by Doug McRae and Roger Buck. And following that, we will have our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, which was sung at the wedding of Princess Elizabeth and uh, Philip Mountbatten in 1947. Welcome to the
welcome to this service of remembrance for the life of Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So we meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. You might like to be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, you look upon us with infinite mercy and justice and love everything you have made. In your mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life and the sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of our late Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, for the love she received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with your servant Elizabeth that clearer vision promised to us in Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Our first uh, reading is going to be brought to us by Dexter Horn. Um, it comes from an old St. Matthew's family and um, Dexter's grandmother, Mar Caden, much loved in our congregation, used to bring a Dexter to church when he was small. And uh, as many grandmothers uh, has, as he's grown up, um, shown him the wonder of uh, Her Majesty um, and today I think some of the love that Dexter has for her. Her Majesty was also helped by his grandmother. A reading from the Book of Lamentations, chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will have hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although we may have grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he is not willingly, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
second lesson is brought to us by Mrs. Helen Glacken. We remember Her Majesty's deep and personal co connection with communities across the world. And we remember also Her Majesty's special connection with Aubrey and the day that she uh, came here and Mrs. Helen Glacken with her uh, late husband was, uh, had, had lunch with, uh, with Her Majesty. I think later on went on the Cumbaruna. Uh, so we do remember those special personal connections across the world. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what, what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is, in, what, what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word, word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We stand, if we are able, as we welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, It is the will of him who sent me that I should lose none of all he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory be to you. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up 
on the last day for the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, you, O Christ. Today has been brought to us, it's going to be brought to us through Gay Patterson, who is the head of staff of ABC Goldwyn Murray, and very familiar also um, with Professor Geoffrey Blaney, one of Australia's most celebrated historians, who have written an address particularly for today. Will you please welcome Gay Patterson? Thank you. I might like to be seated. I'm going to ask Gay to um, read this address from this pulpit, the pulpit across here um, at St Matthew's, which was originally in Westminster Abbey and used for the wedding of King George VI and Elizabeth the Queen Mother. Um, and so as we think about uh, Her Majesty's funeral being at Westminster Abbey today, uh, we remember the many, many links between ourselves um, and the people around the world in devotion to Her Majesty. The Queen's Death by Professor Geoffrey Blaney, a renowned historian and much-loved friend of St Matthew's. Queen Elizabeth II, for much of her life, was the most famous woman in the world. A few film stars for a short time rivalled her fame. A few female politicians, Mrs Thatcher was one, probably rivalled her, but only in certain months. No wonder Queen Elizabeth's death has created a deluge of publicity across the globe. She has a special place in Australian hearts and memories. Her first visit here in 1954 attracted the largest crowd seen in the country. She came to this land another 15 times and she knew Aubrey as well as other towns and cities in this land. On that first visit, she was welcomed not only as the Queen of Australia, but also because she represented the United Kingdom, the nation which in the most perilous months of World War II stood up to Hitler. In 1940 and 1941, alone of the great nations of the era, Britain stood up to Hitler and defied him. This week, it is astonishing to hear Relatively young Australians, well known in politics and sport, accuse her of being racist. Far from it. Her father, King George VI, was the symbolic leader of that nation, which did so much to defeat and crush the most notorious racist in the history of Europe, her Hitler of Nazi Germany. Elizabeth herself, at the age of 18, in wartime uniform, served at the Camberley War Depot near London. Australia and Canada stood alongside Britain in the darkest days of the war. Her most loyal allies, the United States and the Soviet Union, had not yet become enemies of Hitler. In the battle for Britain, a war fought largely in the air, a host of Australians, many from this area, lost their lives. Queen Elizabeth II is especially remembered here today because of the individual she was, as much for the crown she wore. In many years as a role model, she walked a unique tightrope, for she was also a religious leader. For 70 years, she was the formal head of the worldwide Anglican Church. While an Anglican, she generously spoke up for all Christian denominations. In person, she warmly greeted six popes. She had a distinctive and genuine way of welcoming people. Here was a human being, 
with some of the faults and frailties, <clears throat> frailties we all possess, every one of us. And yet she had to appear in the spiritual realm as more than human. What an awesome responsibility. Billy Graham, the American evangelist, was sometimes invited to preside at private religious services at Windsor Castle. The Queen once confided to him at the luncheon held after the religious service that her fondest New Testament story came from St John's Gospel. It recounted an event that took place alongside the water, water pool called Bethesda in Jerusalem. There, Jesus healed a man who had been totally crippled for 38 years. The lame man miraculously stood up, gathered his stretcher or mat and walked away. That's my favorite story, said the queen, and her eyes sparkled as she told it to Billy Graham. Millions of people have been inwardly stirred as they watch television this week. At many funerals, consciously or unconsciously, we each of us often witness or glimpse our own death. We know that our own life has been a gift and that one day it'll be taken away. Tomorrow from Westminster Abbey, we'll listen to the old Anglican Book of Common Prayer. Elizabeth II, on countless occasions, humble or grand, must have heard these majestic words. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing away. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There ends the reading from Professor Geoffrey Blaney. Thank you so very much, and also uh, to the ABC and to all broadcasting organisations that keep us connected uh, with this important narrative. And because of the wonders of modern technology, which was undreamt of at the beginning of Her Majesty's reign, we're able to hear now from Susan Lee. Our member for Farrah, she's recorded a message for us today. This is a tremendously sad time for the world. Prime Minister Liz Truss was absolutely correct when she said the Queen was the rock on which modern Britain was built. A long life devoted to duty that has in turn touched the lives of millions, especially here in Australia. For me, the Queen's reign is bookended by two defining images. That of a young woman who never expected to be the monarch so soon, willingly taking on a lifetime of duty and sacrifice. And the grieving head of state sitting stoically alone at the funeral of her beloved Prince Philip during COVID. I met the Queen with my daughter Georgina at a reception held in the Great Hall of Parliament House in 2011 during Julia Gillard's Prime Ministership. Our first female Prime Minister, the longest serving British monarch and many young Australians for whom the institution of the monarchy must have seemed remote, all came together with real affection for what Queen Elizabeth II represented to the Commonwealth and the world. We have lost one of the most substantial international figures of our time. Thank you, Your Majesty, for everything. And now, in reflection, we listen to the Nunc Dimittis set by staff of one of the jewels of the music, the Anglican tradition. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace.
Leicester, the Bishop of Wangaratta came from Cape Town, where Queen Elizabeth made that remarkable speech so early in her life, dedicating her life, whether it be long or short, to the service of people. And so Bishop Clarence has recorded the prayers for today, which come from the Church of England. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you've given us in and through the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth. We give you thanks for her love of family and a gift of friendship, for her devotion to this nation and to the nations of the Commonwealth, for her great dignity and courtesy, and for her generosity and love of life. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing times, the depth and of her Christian faith, and the witness she bore into it in word and deed. We pray for our sovereign Lord the King and all the royal family, that you might treasure them of your continual love and love them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. Eternal God, fount and source of all authority and wisdom, give to the parliaments in this and every land wisdom and skill, imagination and energy, understanding and integrity, that all may live in peace and happiness, truth and prosperity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, creator and preserver of humankind, we ask that for all sorts and conditions of people, you may make your ways known and your saving health to all nations. We pray too for the Church Universal, that it may be so guided and governed by your Holy Spirit, that all may be led into the way of truth in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. And we commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any way afflicted or distressed, in mind, body or estate, that you may comfort and bless them, giving them patience and hope in their particular situations. And we ask this for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. We pray for ourselves and each other, for the world, for those in Ukraine, all those situations of justice and needing compassion and God's special care and protection. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I to have the hymn, Love Divine or Love's Excelling, a favourite royal hymn. And during this, we're going to be bringing forward gifts for the assistance of our community. As we think about Her Majesty's service of people, not just in word, but also in deed.
For those who are new to St Matthews, you may not know that because of the place that we occupy here on the border, people come to St Matthews every day in real need. And following the example of Christian love and compassion that Her Majesty has also borne, uh, we do try to help people in practical ways. And so in the future, uh, when these young people who are in front of us today um, remember back, perhaps in their older age, they will remember that they were here on this very special occasion of uh, being an important part of our community as together uh, we celebrate the life and witness of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And so we pray for these gifts and also all the acts of Christian kindness and compassion that is shared across our community here on the border on, on every day of the year. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, and through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. You might like to go back to your seats. And, you know, sometimes uh, we, well, we do give, put our hands together and, and sometimes I think that, uh, well, Her Majesty wouldn't mind. Uh, we're thinking about honouring the witness and the opportunity of young people in our community. Why don't we give them a little clap? It may not uh, surprise you to know uh, that those lovely figurines of Her Majesty at various times of her life before us are actually belong to, um, well, Dexter and his family, having belonged to Mark Caton. And uh, so we think about the ways that we, each one of us, pick up messages about love and take them into our adulthood. And remembering those messages of love, if we can't find peace and goodwill in Albury, we'll never find it in the Holy Land uh, or in London or anywhere else in the world. You might think about Ukraine. There's other places in the world that need uh, love and understanding. And so all people are very welcome to take a Holy Communion today, if we're here, from whatever background we may have come. And so we'll do so in a COVID safe way. I'm very pleased that I have a nurse on either side of me. Um, and so we'll be also giving communion in a way that, so we only share the compassion and goodwill and understanding, but nothing much else. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. And this special prayer written at this time for Her Majesty's passing. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is yet to come. Your love made visible in Christ Jesus brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. Therefore, with all of your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and singing. And so we pray, Lord God, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised who gave it to them and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, through the power of your Spirit, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the friendship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Pray for peace, justice, and forgiveness in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught his friends. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This bread is broken in many pieces, but together we share God's love, for we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world Happy are those who are called to his supper. God's love shines for all his people. God welcomes all her children. All are invited. All are welcome. Come.
Let us pray. This prayer written in the Church of England for celebrations of Her Majesty's life across the world. Father in heaven, whose church on earth is a sign of your heavenly peace, an image of the new and eternal Jerusalem, grant to us in the days of our pilgrimage that, fed with the living bread of heaven and united in the body of your Son, we may be a sign of your presence, the place of your glory on earth, and your peace throughout the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together the famous peace prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, and recalling the way that Her Majesty uh, unites people and brings people together in love and peace. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it's in giving that we receive, it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Loving God, show us the way so we might see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day. You send us into the world you love, Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Amen. I ask for Victoria Chick to come forward, one of our church wardens, to bring us our public notices. Thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> There are departing offertory bags as you leave, and there's also a tap and go machine at the back of the church, which is to help with our community service that Matthews is very active in helping people in need. And if you'd like to make a donation, the bank details of St Matthews' account are also in the pew sheet. <coughs> thank you to Professor Blaney for our address this morning, and thank you to Gay Patterson for bringing that to us. And also thank you to Bishop Clarence for bringing us the prayers. And thank you to Father Peter and all the people here today who've worked so hard to make this a special service of remembrance of our Queen. The condolences sheets are at the back of the church and, and Susan Lee will be making sure these get to London. So if you'd like to sign one of those, uh, please do so. <coughs> please stay behind and join us for morning tea and you'll be able to have marmalade sandwiches. <coughs> and thank you to the girls who helped me yesterday with those as well. And we have some Millowa bread at the back of the church for sale, and that also goes towards helping um, our community work. And we have Paddington down here, and we've got his um, Australian cousin called Bruce up here, if you're wondering what he is. So compliments of Eliza. So thanks, everyone, and please stay behind and join us. And also to say that uh, the garden at St Matthews, of course, is a, is a growing community memory. And as today, we're also going to be planting some Queen Elizabeth roses. Um, at the front and also Lily of the Valley, which were particular uh, favourites of Majesty. And so when they bloom, um, as uh, well as the year uh, goes on, we'll be remembering uh, her tremendous uh, love, uh, the, the, the values, um, and all that continues to unite us.
before the blessing, it is uh, perhaps at this uh, time when we remember that, uh, well, life doesn't happen all by itself and that the uh, Governor General is uh, the patron of St Matthew's Music Association uh, and that is because of the tremendous gift of music which brings our community together and I'm so very grateful to the wonderful uh, musicians of our parish. Aren't we so fortunate uh, to be able to join with the rest of the world um, in the most beautiful musical offerings of this time? And also to say that many of our senior citizens today, um, people who are, uh, have grown up um, perhaps joining the journey of the Queen, are unable to be here. Uh, because of the difficulties of COVID and some of them are still in lockdown in our aged care facilities. And I've been speaking with some of them in the last day and they were saying how very, very mindful they are that they would love to have been here with us. And I assured them that I would be remembering with each one of us uh, their particular um, gifts and ministry and life journey. They shall never be forgotten. And I think in Her Majesty's life, and one of the things that we can do to perhaps honour um, her life is to perhaps refine uh, the treasure that is the, the memory of our senior citizens and honour them and look after them in a special way. So we open our hearts to receive God's blessing. God grant to the living grace to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us and those we love, and those for whom we pray now and always. Amen. Go in peace as we continue to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. by Sir Edward Elgar.
Rest eternal, grant to her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Now we're going to the recessional in the way perhaps Her Majesty would most approve of, loving Scotland and the parks. So we're going to be leaving to their rousing sound. 